I'm Laura Daniels and I'm a student of Renewable Energy Engineering. So I've actually been quite interested by some of the things that have already come up in time to speak. So hopefully I might be able to provide some of the answers. And I'm here to tell you why. nuclear renewables are the greatest love story never told. So I would like you to think back where you were when you saw these images. With my brother living just north of Tokyo, these images were quite heartbreaking for me. First, I have the initial, sorry, I'm just going to keep going, sorry. I had the initial worry of where he was, whether he was safe communication lines are down. Then I had the worry of lack of basic supplies, food, electricity, power. And then I faced the worry of all the radiation warnings. He was given an iodine tablet and we didn't know whether he was going to need to use it. So I agonised over those weeks and months following that, that event. And in the meantime, my uh, inbox was filling with articles and debates about the future of renewable energy and nuclear energy, not just in Japan, but in the rest of the world. No doubt you, you all saw the explosion of media coverage. The, uh, the debate looks a little bit like this. Renewables, nuclear, pick a side, where do you stand? Except the middle, because uh, that bit's off limits, you're not allowed to stand there. As um, George Monbiot, who's an environmental writer for The Guardian, soon found out, I think it's safe to say he's still receiving backlash that has been rather intense and quite prolonged after coming out in favour of nuclear power. And then, safely on the renewable side, we have Jonathan Porrick, who's the founder di director of Forum for the Future, who said, A new fight rages between the supporters of the nuclear industry versus the supporters of renewables. Now, his aim may have been to summarise the mood at the time, but I'm really not sure he succeeded in doing so. You see, the events at Fukushima certainly fueled this debate, but it's an old debate, it's an old fight that's been going on for a long time now. And it's proven to be quite self-destructive and somewhat indulgent between the two industries who have ignored the general public all the way through. See, radiation charts are flying around the web and images like this became quite popular. But it was 12 days after the earthquake that my brother greeted me on Skype by saying, by the way, I think you studying down in Cornwall you actually get more radiation than me, just, you know, every day. And I think that highlights the point that we're missing out on here. <laughs> we send around all of these horror stories and scaremongering. But we've made both industries out to be a killer. See, the truth is that the events of Fukushima have just provided yet another long-awaited excuse. Well, they're all hippie protesters for Greenpeace, right? It sounds familiar. It's these stereotypes that we're struggling against. Even the public opinion survey ask which, te which technology you prefer. How loaded a question is that for government statistics to be used on? And this is the problem. The media stereotypes, poor information, poor, poor framing of a debate, and traditional interpretations of the problems have, have led to this stalemate. Both technologies have got this horrible image, images in the public. Okay? And, you know, it's, the problem isn't this. The problem isn't the fact that some people think it's a killer and some people think it's much more ideological than that. So the might have masked this debate and made it very polarised. Many of those voicing the, the pro-renewable side of things are environmentalists and the, whether they're rightly or wrongly they are associated with organisations like Greenpeace and Friends of the Earth, so we're brought up today. And they demand action on climate change but they aggressively oppose nuclear. And a vast majority of these environmentalists, they sign up to an ideology that was born in a movement dating back decades. And their ideologies have moved on a little further than their dreadlocks and their messaging. Okay? And they need to. But they're happy to believe in a world that where everyone can be self-sufficient, where we don't need any type of large-scale uh, large power generation at all, let alone one run by the greedy nuclear industry. And while those in the nuclear industry understand that that, that just isn't the case, 
they really polarise the issue because they fail to address the issues that were spoken about earlier in Thomas' presentation. You know, they've, they've ignored the major concerns of the public, finance, waste and safety. And numerous studies have shown that the lack of trust in nuclear is paramount. The lack of trust in allowing the nuclear industry to run a nuclear plant, which is bizarre. It's what, it's what they're there to do, right? But the fact is that this, this is the polarised issue. This is what the real story is. Most of the general public sit in this happy medium here. They don't really lie indeed either way. You know, Joe Bloggs down the road, he likes his lights to come on when he turns the switch. And he likes not to have to think about what goes on behind the story. Um, and most of neither world proponents nor opponents of the industry. They might hear a news snippet here and there, but they don't really have a massive and strong opinion on either. And the debate is being held over their heads between two sides who are just totally ignoring them. And let's face it, when we strip away all of uh, the images and all of the scaremongering and the safety hype, these technologies are made for each other. You've got renewables can provide this, this intermittency, this changing baseload. If anyone in support of renewables tells you that they can provide a continuous demand, they're lying, laugh them out the room. Right? But they can provide, we don't demand the same amount of electricity 24 hours a day. We do demand varying. Renewables can help to solve this. But large centralised power stations work. We know this. We've developed our systems on it. Our economics are based on it. Our distribution wires are efficient. Why do they need to be changed now? I hope we can all agree, though, that we do need a British renewable energy industry. The international market is growing and the potential for a home growth to secure our energy demand in the near future. But renewables is the only way we can do it too. They play different roles in the grid. Their funding has come from different parts since 2002. And the added benefits are that we build an educated, skilled workforce and, a, who knows, a society that appreciates and values scientists, engineers and technicians once more. But how do we build this partnership? Well, I think we can all agree we need to get rid of images like that. And to move into this middle ground, there needs to be a joint approach. It's not just the renewable supporters, it's not just the nuclear supporters. We need to come together, but both of them need to make, take quite a brave step. We need to take, come away from their perch, you know, strip away their safety, you know, their defence mechanisms, basically, and they need to get educated on the facts. Just how much money do nuclear companies put aside for decommissioning on waste disposal? And is it enough? And how much noise do wind turbines make? And is it too much? And is it unsafe? But although these are important questions, education is just one step of this process. Communication and outreach is far more important. We aren't starting at zero here. If you look at those images of the bird killing turbine and the stop nuclear energy, we're both in negative scoring zones here. You know, there are people out there that really hate those big technologies, and we need to, we need to change that. Um, there's a lot of ground to be made, and some people are really going to get hurt in the process. Environmentalists will fight against the harmony long and hard. It doesn't mean we need to agree with everybody, but we need to find a common ground that both the majority of both supporters can, can be in and belong to. Environmentalists don't make the decisions, but neither do the nuclear industry. The politicians do, and theoretically they, they represent the general public. And if the general public are in here, and if they're asked to pick between nuclear and renewables, they'll probably pick neither. This is a general public that wants an education for their kids, that's facing rising unemployment rates, huge fuel prices, and you know, facing not having a job to be able to look after their families. If both the nuclear industry and the renewable industry stop bickering and fighting like children, perhaps we'll have a bit of a show of our hands for yes to nuclear and yes to renewables. And perhaps one day we'll realise the nuclear renewables could be the greatest love story ever told. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I think for 
a lot of people on the environmentalist side, which I have to profess I know more about than the people on the nuclear side, um, a lot of them, they don't like any sort of form of corporate anybody at all. Um, so you're really facing a bit of an uphill struggle. Uh, but I think the, the problem that I hear most is that when I say to people, you know, these big companies, they are invested in us. You know, you're not going to please a Greenpeace protester overnight by saying, oh, but we've invested lots of money, but it's stuck. If you can, if you can show people that you are doing it, just being more open. I think a lot of people have no idea who, who invest in renewable energy, even the people that support renewable energy. You, know, you talk to people about the type of companies that are investing in them. People don't really know. I think being a bit more proud of it, but not in a kind of, this is our badge of honor, this is our gold star, but now we're going to go carry on doing something else. I don't know if that really answers your question. I hope it does. It's, 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 it's